Hey, security peeps, we are live with another edition of Breaking Into Cybersecurity, and it is the Leadership Edition today. This is Breaking Into Cybersecurity 2.0, the Leadership Edition. I am Renee Small, Cybersecurity Super Recruiter, helping awesome leaders hire great talent, and we have an awesome leader here today. So, Brian, can you quickly introduce yourself? I have Brian Kelly with us here today. Sure. It's great to, to be here today and, and share my insight. Uh, my name is Brian Kelly. I'm the Chief Technology Officer for the Ohio Turnpike and Infrastructure Commission. I've been there about three and a half years. Prior to that, I spent 27 years as a CIO of a large county government. Uh, and during that time, I was also a special deputy sheriff uh, from about 1998 Um until 2014, investigated cybercrime, and I was a commissioned uh, law enforcement officer. Um, you know, since then, I've, I've been very active in the uh, InfraGuard program, and uh, currently I'm the transportation sector chief for our uh, Northern Ohio Alliance of InfraGuard, uh, partnered with the uh, Cleveland, Ohio FBI office. That is a mouthful that I don't think I could have gotten off that well. So <laughs> I'm glad you were able to do that for us, Brian. So what really, really intrigued me about connecting with you is that, and I think I shared this with you when we, when we chatted before having this call, is that it's not, it, 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 I guess it's not unique in the sense of having a CTO that's over the, the turnpikes, but what you know your your background and your situation and where you are and where we are as like in the world um, is very unique in terms of timing. And you and I chatted about so many different things. We talked about you know when I when when I asked you about um, how security professionals can be better leaders and the types of leaders that you look for. And we talked started talking about all the different things that are coming up with technology. Um, so I can't wait to jump in. And the first thing I want to talk about, the first thing I want to ask you about is um, when you look to hire security leaders, what are some of the things that you look for? You know, you've been a CIO, CTO for pretty much 30 years or 30 something years at this point. What do you look for when you are bringing, um, when you're hiring leaders and the difference between hiring like analysts or people who are not leading a team versus leaders? Sure. Um, well, you know, the, one of the most important things is, is not actually the technical skills. Uh, it's the soft skills, the people skills, the ability to communicate and to work with other people, both uh, within the security team, the technology team, and then even probably more important, the entire business enterprise um, and, and the ability to be able to effectively communicate cybersecurity. Um, you know, it, it's very difficult for the non-technical, non-cybersecurity people within the organization to really get a grasp of the seriousness and the challenges uh, that are before us in cybersecurity. So, you know, having those people skills and, and, and the technical skills are, are important as well. Um, you know, having some grounding. So, you know, if you're looking to go into cybersecurity, I, I recommend that you join, for example, the InfraGuard program. Um, that's even open to students while they're in college. Uh, that affords you the opportunity to network, uh, to get further education, and um, to start aligning yourself with the profession and being able to, you know, put on your resume memberships in different cybersecurity associations you know, such as, as InfraGuard, and then taking advantage of, of internship opportunities, uh, whether they be paid or non-paid. I mean, even if it's non-paid, you walk away with a reference letter and you walk away with something that you can put on a resume. And so today, you know, the perfect candidate has the technical skills, the people skills, um, and, you know, has some grounding in terms of, of experience through internships, you know, those first jobs, um, or maybe even a portfolio that they've created through their educational experience, being able to show different projects that they've worked on or, or different things that, that they understand. Um, you know, we also want to know that you can apply those technical skills 
um, that you've learned in pursuit of your education, uh, because that's very important as well. And then being able to be open to change, because, you know, with technology, technology is changing so quickly in the 21st century. So, you know, if you're after a, a four-year degree, uh, by the time you graduate, uh, as a senior, technology has changed drastically in those four years of your college education. So the ability to adapt and to grow and to learn um, is very important as well. Yeah. And Brian, I'm so happy you talked about this. There's every single leader that we have on here. And I asked the same question. And it's always a similar, very similar answer when it comes to leadership that it's the soft skills. And Eric, one of our uh, commenters said this, the human skills are always key. I think that's true even for techies. So when it comes to leadership, the soft skills are always, you know, one of the first things that leaders talk about. And then obviously from an entry perspective, getting that experience, that hands-on experience, unpaid, paid, project-based, you know, all of that. And we didn't get to talk about how you're also a college professor and you teach graduate security courses and undergraduate criminal justice courses. So, you know, just having all of these different um, perspectives that you bring um, is also key, I think, to this discussion as well. So I'm going to add in some comments here because we like to shout out our people who come all the time. Eric gave us a thumbs up. This person, I don't know who this is, but they said, this is awesome. <laughs> Tamara Ritchie is giving us the praise hands. <laughs> Eric right. said before, the human skills are always key. I think that's even true for techies as he, we made that comment. So Kay wants to know, how do you measure soft skills? Because it seems so subjective. Yeah, that, that is. It's so difficult. I mean, um, you know, your, your first opportunity to really identify what's someone is like and how they uh, convey themselves, how they communicate is, is in the interview, of course, right? When you apply for a job and you get called into an interview and you have that first face-to-face -face, um, meeting, you know, with that, that prospective candidate or from the prospective candidate's view, their first meeting who, with who may be their future, future employer. Um, so you learn there, but you can also look at experiences that a person has had in their life. Maybe they've had some type of a leadership role in a student organization uh, that they've been involved with. Um, and so that's something too that you wanna think about. Um, be creative, think and, and look at the things that you've done um, in high school, you've done in college that demonstrate um, your ability to work with others on a team. If you've been in a sports, you've played in sports, you definitely uh, understand teamwork. Um, and, um, you know, the, the other, the other important quality too is character. Um, that's something, uh, that's very important in, in, in terms of a leader, because in order to be a leader, uh, you have to have individuals who see you as a leader and are willing to follow you. So things that attest to your character, and that may be something, again, a student organization that you were involved in, uh, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts. Uh, could be the National Guard, uh, the military, if you were involved in the military. Um, but these are things that you want to very um, passionately and aggressively be able to articulate to a potential employer that you have these type of, of skills. Yeah. And what would you say, um, Brian, I know you talked about the undergrad and the person who's most likely on the younger side. What about career transitioners? Because I know that, you know, there's many, many people in either in other parts of technology and then other parts of just, you know, within with different careers that are tr transitioning in. Um, can you share some of the things that they can show um, that would show leadership, that would show the soft skills? Sure. Um, well, you know, and, and today, I mean, some of the best people that we have in technology and cybersecurity don't even have a, a technology background. Um, and um, so companies today are very willing um, to train. And, and, you know, I've had conversations with my fellow CISOs and CIOs. And there's one thing that we agree on, and that is um, that in, in many cases, um, having the people skills is 
you're a much stronger candidate with the people skills than you are if you just have technical skills. Um, we can help people improve and add on to their technical skills. Um, you know, we, we can't necessarily help people much with, with people skills um, per se. So, um, you know, that's something that um, it's about you. It's what you have. It's who you are. Um, and so, again, you have to look back into your own life portfolio and your own life journey and find examples yourself where, um, you know, you've been a part of a team, you've led a team, um, you know, and be able to project that when you go into the interview and come right out and be, be very bold about it and, and show that you have you have those skills. Right. So you want to be able to articulate that really quickly, easily, you know, these are the skills that I have so that it comes right, right out when you're talking. And then don't wait for the employer to try to, you know, ask you questions about it. You know, when you're given an opportunity to present yourself and who you are, definitely, um, you know, be bold and, and um, come right out and, and show that you, you are a people person and you have those, those skills. Yeah. Eric says joining a speakers club like Toastmasters is also a plus uh, plus one for developing human skills. Um, and Eric also talks about he's uh, he's writing a SOC analyst education module that I'm calling the module communications techniques. The evaluation in the end is a mock interview. That's fantastic. Um, OK, some other shout outs here. So Cedric is here. He says hello, everyone. Kian, I know you asked about InfraGuard, so Amy is sharing that. It's infraguard.org. And if I remember correctly, you have to put some information in and they do a background check and everything on you first before you can get access and be a part of that. Um, Emmanuel says hello. Hello, Emmanuel. Emily says hello. So some of the people that are here, and we're going to jump into this in a second because there's a lot of discussion around internships right now. And I know a lot of the folks that are on, on this live today are interested, looking for opportunities, looking for internship opportunities. Um, and what really, really fascinated me about you and what we talked about is kind of the future of the world, quite frankly, <laughs> not even only yeah. security, not technology, but the world. So I'm going to shout some more, you know, make a couple more comments. And then I want us to definitely jump into that because I've been literally talking about you since we talked last <laughs> last week to people like you have to watch this this is going to be amazing um so eric says here oh I, mean, I think i already got that one um nelson says i'm making a career shift to cyber and looking for that quote foot in the door experience i have a couple friends who own small businesses and have asked me about some cyber concerns they have if i consult and help them with some solutions and i'm able to show this in a portfolio would this look positive to a future a potential future employer. Oh, so. absolutely. To help them, you know, launch their real first security program within, you know, their company is a, you know, that, that uh, is a great, a great reference. And it, and it shows your interest again in the field of, of cybersecurity. And, um, and you never know, I mean, that can launch these, these type of experiences can, you know, expose you to other opportunities, network you with other people and provide you with opportunities that you can't even imagine. So, yeah, dive into it. Seize the day. <laughs> I agree. I, I, I already knew the answer, but I wanted you to yeah. answer. <laughs> Cameron says hello. Tamara Ritchie says internships are tough to qualify for. So much experience and skill required while still in college. And we've had these conversations a lot in terms of this so much. I mean, every week we do a CISO Thursdays and we have a number of CISOs. And one of the ladies who's very, very, very passionate about this space is Naomi Buckwalter. Um, and she and I kind of, it, it's it's interesting because we've been, we're both screaming, I think from both of our ends of LinkedIn, her very, very often as of late, which I love. Um, but just talking about, internships, the nature of internships and how so many security leaders, it seems as though have this challenge and think that, you know, it's difficult to stand up an internship program or, um, you know, they think that people need so much experience coming in. Well, as we both know, especially you being a college professor and being in the industry, know that an intern is just 
you know, college, some college credits, a couple years of, of, of undergrad or training, and then you put them in there. So if you could share a little bit about the internship programs that that you've either headed up or participated in and help your students get into to give some some of the um, the audience members some advice when it comes to um, internships and, and trying to find one. Sure. Well, I, I think the, the first uh, the first thing I'd mention is, you know, we talk about joining InfraGuard. So if there are cybersecurity associations that you can join, join those, because when you go to apply for the internship, those things put you above others that, that have nothing to put on their resume, right? And look for those small opportunities. Um, you know, maybe even go to your own college or university and see if you can do some type, you know, of an internship or a volunteer job helping them out in some way in cybersecurity that could translate to something that you could put on a resume, some type of of experience. Um, because those are the things when there's a hundred other people applying for the same internship, you will stand out if you already have things on your resume that show that you know you have an interest, you have a knowledge and understanding, and you've already had some some practical experience. And and don't give up. Um, you know, apply for every internship opportunity that you can find. You know, be aggressive. Um, reach out to companies where you live, um, and you know maybe they're willing to bring you on board to help them. Um, you know, today there's never enough cybersecurity um, assistance for everything that has to be done um, to secure the enterprise. So be relentless, be bold. Um, you know, if you got to send out a hundred resumes, send out a hundred resumes. If you have to knock on a hundred doors knock on a hundred doors and definitely use LinkedIn. LinkedIn is your electronic resume of the 21st century. And I can't tell you how many opportunities have come my way. I think just being on this program right now, um, Renee came through LinkedIn, right? And and so, you know, put yourself out there on LinkedIn and, and build your, your electronic resume and, you know, post interesting uh, news stories on cybersecurity and start to get a following. And, and start to to be noticed. Yeah, Brian, relentless is my favorite word. Fear, <laughs> it's one of fear, yeah. you know, if you just keep going, keep going like the Energizer Bunny. Eventually, you will get into what you need. So, a lot mm -hmm. of comments are coming in. Um, however, okay, we're gonna go through comments because I love going through comments, and then we're gonna talk about the Great Manure Crisis of eighteen ninety four. Yeah, so. Folks, Brian gave me homework, okay? He's a professor, so that's the way it works. So w before we got here, when I spoke to him last week, he said, you have to, as we were talking about, um, you know, the future of technology, the future of cars, the, the future of travel, um, he told me to do some research and to look up the great manure crisis of 1894. So I'm gonna pass that homework on to you all. So when we're done here, you guys can look it up, but I'm gonna go through the comments and then after we go through the comments, we're going to jump into talking about autonomous vehicles and the future of um, the future of cyber. So a couple comments here. Um, Emily wants to know, in addition to joining different cyber organizations as a college student, what else would be useful when gaining technical skills? So I think we kind of touched on a few of those already. Um, yeah. Love the conversation so far. Love getting perspective from someone in the industry. Uh, Amy says, one thing that helped me was just not joining groups like InfraGuard, but volunteer in capital letters to help. All these groups need help with content and are a great way to build soft skills and networking. That is so true. Yes. Bell Roop says, hello, Renee, and hello, Brian. Um, Zoe saying, it was, it was difficult for me to find internships in the university because of the requirements they wanted. So, Brian, I'm hoping you can influence your peers <laughs> and tell them to cut down on some of those requirements, because that is one of the areas that we hear a lot, that people are very interested, aggressive, doing all they can. But sometimes the requirements for these internships are so, so high. Um, uh, Emmanuel here says, I got two job offers that got rescinded because my security clearance went inactive a little bit over. 
two years ago. Where can I get help? I have the experience in cybersecurity with in-depth knowledge and in RMF. I have CompTIA certificate security plus. Um, Emmanuel, I'm going to put you in touch with Federal Career Connections. They will be able to help you. Um, Tamara says she's been doing CTFs and training such as Try Hack Me and Why Sis. So more, um, you know, more information here. Eric says, what's interesting is that leadership isn't a verb. It's a noun that defines the action of leading. What do you think is essential to leadership training? It's a good one. Well, you know, it, it's all about people, right? And, and it's not necessarily about leading, but it's about facilitating the movement of people in a particular direction. And that's one thing that we have to remember about leaders. It's not about us. It's about the goals and objectives and um, moving a group of people in the right object, right direction to, to accomplish um, those goals and those direction uh, directives that we're, we're trying to, those things we're trying to achieve. Um, and so, you know, again, teamwork and people skills um, and planning skills um, and, and building the workplace culture. Um, that is that is so important um, because people really need to enjoy coming to work. They need to enjoy what they do. Um, if you calculate the hours in, in our lives, we spend about a third of our, our week um, is spent at work. So we spend a lot of time there. We need to make it fun. We need to make it interesting and um, challenging. And, and, and so it's also learning about each person on your team that you're leading and, and finding out what makes them tick um, and what are the skills and qualifications they have that you can leverage to accomplish whatever it is your, your team or your group is, is, is driving to accomplish. Right. So Tamara says, thank you, Ryan and Renee, great tips. She is at 50 resumes so far. So you got 50 more to go in networking. <laughs> Zoe says, should I still apply for internships although I've graduated? Absolutely. You know, um, I was looking at graduating with my, my graduate degree and somebody told me about an internship opportunity. I thought, oh, geez, I, I don't want an internship opportunity. I want a full-time job, but I applied for it anyways found out that it was not an internship opportunity. It truly was a full-time job. And that's where I worked for 27 years. So, <laughs> um, you know, apply for every opportunity. Um, and if nothing else, you know, you get interviewed, that's, that's additional, um, you know, opportunities you had to be able to um, be interviewed and convey the skills and qualifications and, and the passion that you would bring to a prospective employer. Right. Absolutely. Okay. So now for the fun part, um, I did my homework and I learned about the great manure crisis of 1894. And at that time there were the, the transportation mode was in big cities and all around was horse and buggy and horses. And so, Brian, I'll let you jump in and kind of talk about where, where we were in 1894 and where we're going now, especially when it comes to autonomous vehicles and how that aligns to what a lot of the people who are in cybersecurity can look forward to when looking at opportunities. Sure. Well, uh, I'm from Ohio, uh, O-H-I-O, as we like to say. <laughs> um, and in Ohio, Columbus, Ohio, where, where Ohio State University is, uh, back in 1899 was the buggy manufacturing mecca in the United States. And they were producing horses and buggies because that's what people use for transportation. And, you know, that was based on what people wanted in the past and what people wanted in the present. Well, technology was changing, but, but at that time, it was horse and buggy. I mean, there were so many horses on the streets of all of the cities across America, across the world, um, that in 1894 in the London Times, they wrote a story about the great manure crisis. And, and an average horse, just so you know, um, can put down anywhere between 15 to 35 pounds of manure every day. And so the problem back then at the end of the um, 19th century was that the streets were filled with manure. And they, they, they were wondering, you know, how are we going to be able to handle this? Well, 
technology was getting ready to change. A paradigm shift was getting ready to occur. And Henry Ford and others in Detroit uh, were working on a new type of transportation that didn't require horses. And um, in a few years after the turn of the century, Detroit lit up and we had the automobile. And if you go back and look at pictures of New York City uh, in 1900, you'll see that the streets were filled with horses and carriages. If you then look at pictures of New York City in 1912, you maybe see one or two horse and carriages. You see the, the, the streets filled with automobiles. And so things flip. And right now in the 21st century, we are getting ready for a major flip. Um, and it's going to be awesome. And this flip is with autonomous vehicles. Um, we are really poor drivers as human beings. We really do not do it well. I call it the failed human experiment. Um, and today we're so distracted, right? Um, we're, we're, we're putting our makeup on, we're, we're fixing our hair, uh, we're texting, we're looking at Facebook and Twitter, um, we're watching movies, we're eating, we're so distracted and driving. And, and sadly, 37,000 to 40,000 people die every year in motor vehicle crashes. Uh, if you go to the CDC and look at the leading cause of death for teenagers, it's automobile mo crashes. Six to nine teenagers die every day. And so um, currently we're, we're going towards autonomous vehicles and, and don't, don't listen to what you hear about Tesla and Uber and crashes, but, but the companies like Ford and GM and others that they've been making automobiles for, for over 100 years are working on this technology and they're perfecting it with major universities. And, and that technology is going to transform our lives in many ways, but it also affords new opportunities for those looking to go into cybersecurity because now there's an attack surface on a vehicle, right? Um, and, and we have these connected vehicles today. Uh, most cars from, from 2015 forward have anywhere between 70 to 100 million lines of software code. And cars today really are rolling data centers. Um, in 2022, Ford, all Ford vehicles coming off the assembly line will have the capacity to talk to one another as those cars go down the road. And, and our cars are gonna be very soon making payments for us. Um, you know, we're gonna roll up to that Starbucks window and the car is actually going to make the payment. We won't have to uh, give a credit card. We won't have to give cash. Um, it will make the payment at the gas pump, at the parking garage, uh, at the, the toll plaza when we get on a toll road. Um, and so technology is really getting ready to flip. And, and there is a big cybersecurity focus to all this, too, because where you have technology, um, you know, you have cyber uh, security and, and cyber risk. So this is a whole nother area. And if that's something that really fascinates you, um, you know, look into mechanical engineering uh, is, is what I've been told from those in the auto manufacturing um, look at that with a, a minor in, in technology. Um, but, but there's a lot of opportunities today uh, in the 21st century with the Internet of Things and the way that our, our society is being transformed by technology. The other thing that's really great for cybersecurity is that we're in a never ending cyber war. Um, it is not going to end in our lifetime. Um, this is going to be an ongoing challenge. So if you have the skills and the qualification and the education, um, you have a lot of job security and you have a great career ahead of you um, as we continue to move on in the 21st century. So Brian, um, co a, a ton of comments coming in here and I know we're at, at I anticipated being at this, <laughs> At this point, we're at the 29 minute mark. So do you have a couple more minutes that you can spare with us? Sure. And then I think you and I talked about it. maybe I need to come back at some you, point. You're going to have to come back. <laughs> and we, uh, we dive deeper, right? Yes. Yeah. I, I anticipated. I knew this was going to happen. Um, so uh, Zoe makes a comment here. She says Ford's Mustang Mach-E is looking promising. Yeah. Pretty uh, cool. Yeah. So when it comes to, you know, what I loved about this conversation is that 
you, we are, you know, you're looking at what's coming, what's, what's future looking, what's about to happen, how, you know, literally our lives are going to change. We won't. And, and what I asked Brian with my little ones, I was like, well, they need driver's licenses. And he's like, no, <laughs> so, you know, our lives are literally going to change. And there's so much opportunity for cyber folks in this space because Absolutely. all of the, you know, everything that's needed to make this happen. Another, like you said, another attack vector, another, you know, 70 to 100 million lines of code. I said that to my my son and he was like, oh, my, he, I, I forgot what he said, but he, he called it a, he said it was a mock, I uh, can't remember. But, you know, talking about the, the amount of code, you talked about how that amount of code was what was needed for, to send, you know, rockets into space. Um, and there's just going to be so, so much when it comes to opportunity. Now we now have to deal with IOT from a car perspective and how many of us drive cars. So there's going to be so, so much opportunity in this space. Um, Brian, what would you recommend? I know you said mechanical engineering with a minor in cyber, um, but, but companies right now, I mean, you're, you're working with or you're partnered up with a lot of these organizations, what kinds of talent are they looking for? Are they upskilling people within? Like if you already work at Ford, are you being upskilled? I know you talked about mechanics being, you know, now skilled in technology. Tell us a little bit about the types of skills that people outside of the mechanical engineering piece, but people who are already, you know, that may not necessarily be going back to school you know, could they get a, a, a job at Ford in a different department and kind of get upskilled and transition over? Yeah, I mean, that, that's a possibility as well. I mean, the jobs that are being created right now are, are literally being created right now. So, um, you know, there is no uh, workforce out there to tap into that, that has all of the education and knowledge. So, again, it's finding individuals that have some foundational uh, knowledge um, and or experience and then training them. And um, so, um, you know, it, it's back to those basics that we've talked about uh, during the last half hour, you know, the internship opportunities, uh, the organizations that you join um, and, and seizing every opportunity you get that you can communicate onto a resume or, or in an interview to show, you know, I mean, what employers are looking for today is that you can walk in and begin doing a job today. It has, doesn't have to be a complex job, but they need to know that, that you're ready to, to come in and to roll up your sleeves and, and get working. And, and one plug I wanted to give is we need more women in technology and cybersecurity. And, and, um, and companies are looking at that. I mean, they are recruiting uh, women in technology and cybersecurity. So if you're a woman and <laughs> um, technology or cybersecurity is, you know, your chosen passion, um, kudos, you've chosen well, uh, because that, you know, employers are looking for that. We, we have, um, today I read, I think 25% of um, cybersecurity professionals are women. So um, a, a lot of ground there to make up, right? To get it to where it should be. Awesome, awesome. Um, Cyber West says, good stuff, still never buying a car that drives itself though, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, you you probably well, you probably won't buy an autonomous car. You'll just ride in an autonomous car. Um, <laughs> car ownership will probably go away. We won't own cars um, in the future. We'll subscribe to a car, and um, so and that maybe that's something we can go into more in depth in a, in another session. Yep, we'll go more in depth. Mamdi wants to know: Did we get into adversarial attacks in the autonomous autonomous driving space? Oh Not yeah. <laughs> not in depth, but we'll, we definitely will do so when Brian comes back. So Brian, like I said, you know, the comments are coming in. Rachel says she's going to join Brian. You just got my connection request. Yes. More ladies. Uh, Sean is saying, I do love to get down and dirty. Um, so many good comments in here, but I know we have to run. So, Connect with me on LinkedIn. I, I push out a lot of information on these things that we're talking about so you can 
follow me there. Connect with Brian. I'm going to tag him in here. Um, make sure you connect with him on LinkedIn. And Brian, you have to come back because, like I said, I'm, I'm curious. I want to learn more about all of this. I definitely want to help all of these folks. Our, you know, our whole breaking into cybersecurity series is about helping people get get into new opportunities. And this just, just seems like this big green field that people might not be overly focused on. And so many people are trying to break in through like SOC analyst roles and all these other things. And then you have this big, huge opportunity that's coming. So thank you so, so much for being here. Go ahead. You want to say something before we wrap? Yeah, uh, you know, the FBI has a great internship program as well. And so I encourage you to go out to your local FBI office and look at their internship program. Uh, they not only offer these during the summer, but if they bring you on as a summer intern and things go really well, they'll actually work with you during the, the fall and spring to, to, to keep uh, your experience going based upon your schedule. So um, definitely check that out if you're looking for an internship. Excellent. Excellent. Awesome. They're already saying come back. Yes, definitely come back. Sean says, Roger says, great session. Thank you. Love the insight. And thank you for taking the time, Brian. Love it. Great info. Brian, you're a hit as I anticipated. <laughs> you have great. to come back. We'll make it happen. And everybody else, folks, as you know, we will see you on CISO Thursdays this Thursday with James Azar, Naomi Buckwalter, and Chris Folon. So uh, stay tuned for part two of Brian Kelly coming back to talk to us about autonomous vehicles and how all these awesome cybersecurity folks can get into that industry. So thank you so, so much again, Brian. Thank you. Okay, bye everybody.